there are white people that are wanting to resolve this problem. And, and I, I say this with ultimate respect for the board member. And I listen to you with great respect that every time, almost every time, I do this, this comes up. I did right. it on a radio station, that came up. I right. wrote it in the newspaper, that came and up. And it affects us all. But and the thing is that I'm going to keep on saying it. Right. And because unless we deal, right. unless we deal with right. the serious fundamental issues right. in our society, and I know that there are a lot of, you know, Well, like what yourself. happens sometimes is misinformation. Well, and actually, this is my first experience here. And as a white woman that has heard this rhetoric, I may never have to come and tell my brother-in-law, encourage me to come. And I've heard things I may never have heard because of that type of talk. Because it, it excludes certain people. So that's just my position. Okay. No, and I appreciate it. I'm not going to notify at all. Because I understand that every time I say this, I know that this is going to happen. Okay. by race, ethnicity, and class. Right. So you can say that this is an opinion, this is historical, but it is data, it is fact. If you look at housing, if you look at education, if you look at health, if you look at you know advancement, if you look at wealth building, there are disparities across the board. In this city, we, have a, we live in a very deeply divided city. And that is data and that is reality. And so until Everyone is really I, I able to listen with an open mind and an ball. open heart. We will not vote. Okay, we can't speak on top of each other. So, I, you've spoken now. Um, instead of going back and forth, okay, who has their hand up and who hasn't spoken yet? First priority. Sorry, I haven't heard you speak. Um, because we are a mixed group here, there's about um, the if this reflects the more or less the demographics of San Antonio. With there's only three um, African Americans here. Excuse me. There, At least tonight you said I can't hear you. Um, right here. Okay, thank you. I, I can't project my voice very loudly, but I'd like to address your issue. Um, there's a an academic named Robin D'Angelo. She's white. She speaks on something called white fragility. And if you could look her up on YouTube or Vimeo, um, she's great and she speaks to the discourse of power in groups and a feeling of, of um, maybe alienation of allies, but, but she speaks to it in a, in a way that maybe would help this group um, in the dynamics because as people of color, when we raise our issues, uh, sometimes it can feel very, um, hurtful or, or alienating to white people. Well, we don't mean to do that. We're simply speaking our truth. And 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 so um, I would recommend Robin D'Angelo um, on white fragility. Thank you. Thank you. When I look across the room as we're talking about this issue, what I see as human beings, that's all. Okay. Some are women. Some are men, some are young, some are old, some are have different shades of color. But what I see as human beings, and I fight this battle, and I'm, you know, I realize I'm black, but when I'm fighting this battle, I'm not fighting it as a black man, I'm a human being. All human beings deserve equal, fair, just treatment. And until we can look across this room and see nothing but human beings, we were quick dividing ourselves by the sentimentality of our individual issues. Because these things are affecting all of us, directly or indirectly. And until we can stand up and see nothing but human beings, the problem is within us. And again, we're going to have to also just, I mean, we were focused there and then we got on the tangent, which is important issue i'm not going to deny it, but i also want to make sure we get to a place where we know our next steps because then people are going to just leave we're going to leave yeah. I'm, I'm to, so my question my question kind of changes the subject but it's something that impacts all of us and, and my question is to you from you so the city has a bond issue 100 million or more bond issue um spearheaded by robert Roberto Trevino for 
or re, um, urban renewal. I think that's even what it's calling it. I don't can't remember, but that's what it's for. What, what urban renewal? Tommy Calvert has a committee, and and Roberto Trevino's committee is primarily um, developers. Uh, Tommy Calvert has the Neighborhood Reinvestment Fund, another hundred to two hundred million next year, uh, a bond issue um, for for reinvestment in neighborhoods, another buzzword for gentrification, more Ceballos loss. That's one of the examples that's given in that group. So if this 200 to 400 million dollars comes into the city, do any neighborhoods really stand a chance? I think before we get to that point, we need to see what the bond issue is going to be and analyze it and see to who is going to benefit by it. That's very important. That the people have a way to impact it. And by the people, I mean the, the average citizen. Because it's going to involve housing. It's going to involve development. It's going to involve parks. And right now, that's what the discussions are. So we just need to know it's happening and that we make, to make sure that the people have an input and we need to know who decides it. Then we can go to what you're saying. And more people in this room need to be involved in both of those efforts. Informed. Okay, wait. Right okay. Let's, we're not doing back and forth. Amy, Meredith, and Kat. And then we have to stop because we need to know next steps. I just wanted to, to throw into the conversation about race and a phrase that I really uh, love and admire, and that is um, when we talk about being left out as, as in the economic inequality, Another way to think about that is that the poor are not the people being left behind or left out. They're the people being robbed. They've never been part of it. Well, I think it's important to think about the, the valuable uh, assets that communities, particularly communities of color in this city have and how they are being taken away for the purpose of making money. Okay, who did I call Meredith, I think, and then Pat? Uh, I also, uh, I'll just mention this very quickly, but one of the things that I encourage everybody to do is to take a look at the Sierra Club, the Alamo Group of the Sierra Club's new website. Uh, we have an issue on there called Water Management and we are mounting more and more parts of it. But the thing that uh, I would like you especially to look at is how the city of Melbourne dealt with the drought that it had. It had a 13 year long drought, major, major disaster. They were down to less than a quarter of the uh, water that they should have in their reservoir. They barely made it through it. But the interesting thing was that they all got in and everybody made a point of reducing the amount of water they were using and working together. And that was pretty much their attitude. I have a feeling that this San Antonio, uh, given what we saw in the paper recently about how many rich people were using far more water during the last drought, we'd have a hard time persuading this city that we're all in this together. But we could be all in this together. In other words, I think that about something like water, we really could and should work toward that. I, I encourage you all to take a look at the website, uh, but I would also encourage you to call on Jim at some point because he, he has an answer. Okay, well. and uh, there's a white Prius blocking a gold Prius down in the parking lot, so she's been trying to leave. Okay, is that what you needed? Yeah, I'm the gold Prius and I'm trying to leave. And so I'm there's a white Prius. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if I don't want to belabor this, but I want to go back to the, the race issue. And uh, what I want to say to that is I think it's very important. You know, uh, uh, a lot of the ills in society have been uh, done by people like me, men, yeah, men. And I should be offended every time they bring up men, right? And uh, you, you have to understand that, you know, it's not being, I'm not being attacked personally, but I know that the group that I belong to 
has been responsible for many of the ills. And even though it may offend me personally, I know it's not addressed at me. And so uh, I have to kind of like swallow that because I have to work myself out of it. And so, uh, you know, again, quite, uh, it's not you, you're here, you're helping, we appreciate that. There's many people who are white, but you know, just like men, I happen to be part of that group of men, oh my gosh, you know. And, and I think, you know, you know, the women have been very upset about what, has happened, what have, men have done, so they're going to vent at men. I happen to be one. So I'm just saying that so we can kind of like uh, put it in the context and uh, not to take it personal, but oh, some, yeah. And just to clarify, I was not offended in any way. My point is that if you get the white community on board in the solution, as part of the solution, yeah. Uh, yeah. then you come together to solve the problem. That's my point. Not one of us ever. Thank you. Thank you. you and you. <laughs> Sorry. Yes. This is a totally different topic, but it's related to money. Okay, men. I heard a talk about the current city budget, but I forget the term. But the net of it is that yes, we will have a bond issue for seven hundred fifty million or something like that over ten years till we get to vote. On it. But also, there are bonds that are put on the market on the city uh, every year that we don't get to vote on. And those have been shrinking over the last 10 years, and the plan is to increase them so that we will have another $750 million in yeah. city debt over which we have, if, if, if uh, the person I heard is right, over which we have no say whatsoever. Like the baseball team? <laughs> yes. Okay. Yes, I just want to make a suggestion to you because semantics are very important. And I know what you're trying to say, and the lady over there with the statistics too. It's important to make designations, but Hispanics are Caucasian. Right. So what we say here, what? What we say here is Anglo. Anglo means a certain ethnicity, and we are Hispanic. We're also white. Right. But you're not, you know, you're making a designation so that you can talk about issues, but you're not including us from who we belong to. Because we've been maligned met over decades. Uh, there's a Supreme Court, uh, um, uh, we had a, a Gus Garcia, the one a Supreme Court issue on that particular thing. We're white when it's convenient for the right. Anglo community, and we're colored, or whatever you want to call us, but it's not convenient. Exactly. We are white, we are Caucasians, we are that. Hispanic, and you are Anglo, and then we are no. no. Okay, okay, okay. We're going to stop. We're going to stop. We're going to stop. We're going to stop. We get solutions, and then we get triggered again. And it is true. We're all going to work together. Um, oh, you had your hand up before you took care of me. But yeah. can I just ask about the bond? Can I ask a question about the bond? Okay, ask a question. Or I can ask it to somebody later. Okay. All right. Then Gianna. Because I may also be able to ask. Because we're going to get we're going to get there too. So you can just but you ask questions. So I have been looking for information about the bond website, and I have called. I am. I get in a telephone thing where I call one city department, and then they say, oh, I'm going to call this person, and then I call that person, and then it's like eight different people, and I can't find any information, um, and it's eternal. And so I'm just curious, like, where is it, or does anyone know? Or the city, yeah, the, the city bond, right now the committees are forming, so if you have priorities in terms of housing, sidewalks and streets, um, parks, uh, and facilities, and drainage. You need to get those to your council people because they're forming the committees right now that are going to start writing the actual bond. Okay. And the county one, county okay. 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 Fund, the there, are two, county there are two billion dollars that the city has already priced out of projects. So the council people now are looking for people to be on those bond committees. But, and then and like in District 1, Trevino is every Monday night having a bond get together at his field office. But they've already priced out the staff, if they call it level two, they've already priced out $2 billion in bond projects. Barbara, I'm sorry, can you repeat that? We're actually gonna write that down. This is part of our next steps. Um, sorry, that's there. On the, on the, I'm sorry. 
are looking, there's an application process to be on the bond committees. And where do they find that application? With their councilman's person's office. They have them. But some council members seem not to know that, right? So that's the concern we're having. I, in turn, I don't know about other districts. All I know is that District 1 is right now gathering applications that they're handing out at meetings and then they're having meetings every Monday night uh, at the Vance Jackson and 10 office in old uh, fire station at seven o'clock for district okay. one. Every Monday night, seven o'clock, Vance Jackson. District one. District right, one. District Which one. is downtown and, well, south town to the North Star Mall area. Right. Okay, thank you. Um, and so some other, so we're talking about the bond, a lot of you are talking about the bond. So a subsection of the bond is the housing bond. Right. Um, and so we even, the insurance actually made a video that we can send to you all if you have an email, so you can see it. Um, but that explains the housing bond some more. But pretty much there's some drama going on with the housing bond where um, originally the housing commission that's been working on this bond for a few months um, came up with this bond. I, I package idea that included money for affordable housing, uh, money for um, emergency emergency repairs for houses, um, and then what was the other one? Gap funding for multi yeah. developers. Okay. For money yeah. for developers. So it's going to be like for affordable housing, but it would be two for incentives for developers. But the only one that could happen. They said all of these you can't do. The only way that you can get incentives to developers for affordable housing is if we make another um, urban renewal project right. and then give that money to that project right. um, and buying up land and displacing An eminent people. domain. Patty. An eminent domain. You need to listen to this. What's happening with the bond issue, about the housing bond issue right now is going straight into Winston Martin's old uh, urban renewal agency that the city took in and they're going to put that money in that de city department now and use it for eminent domain and uh, using the the urban renewal model that's and since you talked about that i wanted you to be made aware of it can i just yes. say one thing that feeds right into it the city hired a whole lot of code compliance officers they have new categories they're cruising around town and they're marking down houses that they might think yep. they might be vacant. I spoke with one direct, I said, how about if it's vacant because there is no renter in it right now? We're doing, oh, well, then we're gonna charge you a fine. They are out for blood and they can eliminate affordable, low-income housing 
and small operators. You need to be really aware. There are vault, like vultures out there. If you engage them, they will even admit, oh yeah, we're a new group of 10 and we're doing a neighborhood street. And districts five, one, and two are the, the ones where most code compliance officers are at. And, and there's another bond issue proposal, a neighborhood reinvestment fund bond proposal issued through the county. It was originally gonna be a city, county, co project. They split part of that off and that's what, and so there are all of these city development bond issues that are happen every year kind of thing. There's also this big one that's now the city and another one for the county. And the neighborhood reinvestment fund is the one out of the county through Tommy Calvert's office. He's heading the committee. And the urban redevelopment one that where the city split from the county to do their own is being headed up by Roberto Trevino. And, and both of those have to do with exactly what we're talking about here. Yeah, thank you. So what I wanted to say about so housing bond they're having, the Housing Commission is going to be voting on the um, package that they want to present to Council um, August 2nd. It's on a Tuesday, 4 p.m. They moved it to Mission Branch Public Library. Um, it is open to the community and you can sign up to speak. Um, I've been there a few times and some, some other folks have been there. And usually when we do speak, it is to commissioners and most of them, they are either community members, some are developers, but a lot of them mean well, and so when we do speak, they do hear us, and a lot of them get confused, and they're like, oh no, I don't know how to vote now. Um, and so if we can do that, if you show up um, and speak your mind, that would be. Well, and I just wanted to, about the housing bond, though, the last meeting that happened in June, because they were done in July, again, they, they did the switcheroo again, where we were actually asking for funds for, you know, the inner city folks, especially, people over 65 and low income and and it was a good thing <laughs> but they said that the attorney general wouldn't support it and so they always go back to the legal stuff but instead of having our our city uh, staff say this is what the community wants they kind of throw it back at the state attorney general office and say we have nothing to do so whatever the state attorney general says is what we have to do Right, and that's what you caught. Go ahead. And, and, and hire outside counsel that is a corporate law firm working with developers who then are, negotiate with the attorney general and come up with a decision that we can't uh, fund low-income housing. So. Or actually, to be, I'm sorry, I should be more uh, appropriate. We can't, yes, we can't fund rehabilitation of owner-occupied low-income housing. Betty? Yeah, uh, this, this to go back to the bonds, a very important thing. Be sure you see the budget. Be sure you ask the city how much revenue. Let them balance the budget, for goodness sake. When we do these bonds, this isn't just money that's given to us. This is money that we're borrowing. We're not only borrowing it, but we're paying interest on it. And it's all going to develop it. Guess where the money comes from when we get through? On your tax bill, on your CPS bill, on your water bill, on everything this city generates money on, they've already figured it out. So just bear in mind, bonds are not always good. No. All this bond, and they're never. Who's going to watch? We go down there and we say we want this done Who's going to be watching that project? I can tell you five of them right now in the past bond from 1999 that had been moved. We voted on them. The city voted on them. We borrowed the money. But guess what? It got moved to some council pet project for some developer that somebody gave them the money for whatever. And that is what is wrong. So that is what's up. So when you borrow, when we borrow that money, just think about it. We're borrowing money. It's going to go on your tax bill. My taxes have gone up. I pay hospital taxes almost as high as my school taxes now. Isn't that strange? Yet we have Obamacare. 
Nobody goes to any hospital free. I shouldn't be paying university for all of the counties in Texas. We're the only county that pays taxes, hospital taxes. The other counties don't pay hospital taxes. Excuse me, but they use that hospital and we pay for it in Bear County. So just bear that all in mind as you go to these bond things. And the other thing about the bond is they're being very selective on who gets put on the bond committees. I've been asking, oh, excuse me, we might find a place for you. We might. So what are we doing? We're picking out who's going to be on those bond committees to pick out what these developers want. If you want to sell your city to the developers? Go right ahead. The Brackenridge Park Master Plan has the door shut on modifying that, that plan. Yeah. Uh, now, I'm being very hopeful based on what uh, I have heard from council members. So what we have to do is we have to show up at the meeting on August 15. We're trying to change it. It's usually at 2 p.m. We're trying to change it so it'll be a little later. And that's where five council members, Trevino, Medina, Lopez, Warwick, and Saldana, is the Quality of Life Committee. They're going to meet. And they're going to, they're going to, um, they will have already reviewed all the input from the six public hearings where people didn't like it. Now we're waiting to see what they're going to do. So we have a question mark right now. Let and we have to show up uh, and, and, and make sure that they heard us and what we want. We want them to stop it and start from scratch, being more inclusive on what they did because the park does need help. But you also need um, community support. Can I just take a minute to mention something the that, 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 that was not on the timeline. It relates to what you've been doing. Uh, I, I didn't see the tri-party transportation project downtown, which is a major event, hugely controversial, took years and years. But one of the things that was a focal point of that, and uh, I found out after uh, the fact, uh, back a few years later from some planner friends uh, that one of their objectives was to remove the minority kids from Houston Street. It, it was A lot of it was a subterfuge. This was where they, they modified our streets, broad, broadened sidewalks, you know, narrowed others, put up lots of street furniture and other things. Uh, some of you might know that in San Antonio we've had historically this promenade down Houston Street uh, particularly after school, uh, you would have mostly minority kids, uh, mostly blacks from Wheatley and, and uh, Sam Houston, and Latinos from Fox Tech, and blacks and Latinos from Brackenridge. They would transfer buses uh, along Houston Street, and you had this kind of promenade, very much like uh, what existed along Zocalo's, uh, in, in, uh, in Mexico, it, it was uh, that for sale. Exactly. Uh, the, uh, well, uh, and it and it worked. You know, they they took the buses off Houston Street. They got rid of the kids. Okay. Some of the kids went over to to uh, uh, River Center uh, Mall. Why that is relevant to Brackenridge Park is that I went five years ago. I was invited by a planner friend to uh, a meeting that was an organizational meeting for the Brackenridge Park Conservancy. And uh, one of the things I mentioned that got me disinvited was uh, to, uh, that I suggested they shouldn't make the mistake that they made on Houston Street uh, in Brackenridge Park, because we have a paseo that is very culturally specific uh, in cars <laughs> around Brackenridge Park on Sunday afternoons. I mean, the, the only place in Texas I've ever seen anything like that is Rivershawn Park in Dallas, uh, near uh, Little Mexico in, 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 in Dallas. But that this is part of San Antonio culture. You're destroying San Antonio culture if you uh, make the same mistake uh, that you, you did on Houston Street. Uh, well, as we know, they want to close Brackenridge Park to cars, which is a, a total renunciation of what Brackenridge Park is all about. Uh, and I think that's, that's hugely important. They got away with it on Houston Street. We can't even have our parades on Houston Street anymore uh, because they narrowed it, all trying to get rid of the kids. They're, they're trying to get rid of the culture at Brackenridge Park as well. We, we need to, it's a major issue, we need to deal with it. 
Yeah. Okay. Let me, uh, if I can just real very quickly, uh, I'm just going to say uh, hold on to your wallet and your purse is even higher because there's a municipal bond, there's the uh, the uh, the uh, Vista Ridge and the housing bond. Here comes another one. It is the uh, Animal College's bond coming up next year, 450 million dollars. Okay, well, just kind of we're going to pay for it. Um, the, they've got the plans set up. It looks beautiful. Um, the advisory citizens advisory committee has not even been set up. So somebody already came up with a plan, <laughs> right? Uh, it, it's going to put possibly another campus on the north side, uh, but three. <laughs> south side, one. Uh, you know, eight, exactly, west side, zero. You know. So again, no citizens' input uh, or hardly any. Uh, again, another bond that's going to like just count how much money we're going to be spending in the future. We've got billions now, There's billions, two or three billion dollars. So. Just put that on your radar because that's what that is going to come at you. Yeah, and I don't want, at least at the Esperanza, we're not just anti-taxers. I don't, I pay taxes and I want my taxes to be used yeah, to support, time. you know, the infrastructure, to support, you know, housing, to take, you know, the social schools. service, the schools, you know, the especially, arts. huh? The arts. Park, the, the arts, all of the things that make our lives better, that make educate our young people, you know, that give us a reason to live, right? So I don't want this meeting to see that we're a whole bunch of, you know, tea partiers. I'm not, and I, you know, we're not here. And if you're a tea partier, I'm sorry, but, you know, but what we do want is to be able to say this is where we want our money and that we don't need to just continue to tax. Because I remember the West Side, they tore down all the elementary, junior high, and high schools in the West Side, beautiful schools. But it was, again, for the developers to make their money off of new schools that we didn't need. If you love Jefferson, all those schools look like Jefferson. And that one survived. You know, Fox Tech, Lanier, they were beautiful. They were gems, you know. so. So it, you know, most of that money again continues to go to developers just to buy to make cheaply made houses or huge, you know, developments with you know multi. I mean, you can see it. The Univision got torn down, and the housing that's going to cost a lot of money to live in is cheaply made. So, but it's going to cost a lot to live there, and that's where we don't want those millions and billions of dollars to just go to, to line the pockets of these folks that don't even live here. They send their money somewhere else. It's not coming back here. So, Gianna. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So was, I just wanted to get through some other meetings, and I know there's some more meetings that probably aren't on here, and so uh, we're running out of time, but we can also you can add them on here if you know there's any other community meetings for Brackenridge, for any other parks, for anything that you think community members should go People to. People just can go, go yeah, up and sign. just go up and write down. And we, um, will, we will take all those notes and give them to you all. Yeah, so we'll give them to you and going back, oh, if, um, if, if, if whoever has a sign-in sheet, one. you can please remember to sign in, then we can contact you if you're interested for the next meeting, for notes, stuff like that. So also, going back, to kind of mentioned essay tomorrow, um, how that's the plan. Um, we, we've been looking at it, a lot of the interns have been working on it this summer, how it's very development based, how they want to make um, like regional, they call them regional centers, but all it is is that there's, if you look at the map of their proposed regional centers, they're mostly on the north side and there's like two on the south side, but what they want is bond money and budget money to go. So again, it's the same thing, all our money going to the north side instead of areas that actually need um, to be fixed that need new infrastructure, that need uh, money for the school, and stuff like that. Um, so there's a B session meeting, the SE tomorrow on August 3rd. They're going to be voting on it um, mid August. August 11th. August 11th. Um, and so for, for there are going to be having this, there's going to be citizens to be heard opportunities, and there's going to be times that you can call up your city council person can write to them and tell them, hey, like, if this is what I want to be part of SE tomorrow, or this is what I don't want, whatever. Um, but you should at least go to this, it's going to be a briefing, so this, play, the briefing you can't speak at, but you can listen to what they're, what they're, what they're proposing and make your own mind up.
on August 3rd, later that day at 5 p.m., uh, Unite Here is organizing um, like a rally in front of City Hall, and then at 6 p.m., uh, there is that Citizens to be Heard part. So we're just trying to get as many people who are, you know, upset about like the giveaways, uh, City Council giving away tax dollars and parks and all that, to go and speak at this event. So I'll pass around flyers at the end, but yeah, I would encourage you all to go and speak if you're interested. Thank you. I I just like to say all these. I want to keep up with this stuff. Could you put it on your Facebook so I've got a calendar I can go to and say, oh, I can go to this house. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> so again, today was just the be. Again, it's not a beginning because we come with history. But I know we lost one person very frustrated because they didn't want to participate in the history because they've been gone and they didn't feel part of it. I felt a lot of people appreciated the history. And so, I mean, otherwise we'd have lost most of you. <laughs> and, there, and, and, and so I think, again, uh, we'll, we'll type all of this up, and it's not something that's over, so please, we'll, we'll want you to add more information in here so we have more history to share with everybody. Uh, we have that little power. Can I say one thing on the history? And I just wanted to put, put in another plug to, for Maria's book. Maria, Daughter of Immigrants. Yeah, we have it's a, a book list right here. It's a very, very important book uh, that I, that's, that's the history that we talk about here. I think it's it's a fabulous book and I think it's required reading really Absolutely. For, for a lot, for Thank all you. of us. Thank you. Thank you. Where can you buy the book at? You can buy, I think we have some at the Esperanza. Oh, yes. Good oh, plug. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so that's that's really important. I think we also put uh, Rudy Rosales says the illusion of inclusion. I've already read it. Okay, and <laughs> and if somebody can't afford it, contact me. Okay. I can't afford it. Okay. Well, we can do that. And then we also were doing that power mapping. It it's still evolving. So uh, I think we were going to be able to share it, but I think we want to also adjust it. So I know some media was taking pictures. That's not a final thing. I know that my Antonia Castaneda left and said, please incorporate you know, the economic base, like tourism culture, right? Again, that's what allows for this major gap in economics, you know, um, um, Division, right? Because and the bars. I mean, all we have is bars. They cleaned out all the bars out of the west side. But they, I mean, so so it was that bad. But now they have a mall downtown. You know? Well, again, if they're from millennials, they're cool. And if there are cantinas, they're bad and whatever. Um, and the the next community meeting, um, we're, we want to continue these conversations. If y'all if if y'all want to continue them, we will continue yes. them. Um, next month, August 27th, we're going to try to keep these to the last week of the month, at least through September and October, at least. And we'll have to switch it because we have Peace Market, but yeah. No, but we can have, again, other subcommittees, but basically it's like how together as a community of people who believe and work for justice, how we're going to come up with these strategies so that we're working better more strategically and not by ourselves because again when we do it by ourselves you know it's one one struggle and we're out of there and we go away because you know more than likely we're going to lose and if we win the next battle we're going to lose so it's just too much and we just need to be smart about how we do the work go ahead Brett. i haven't got a chance to talk yes yet. i'm sorry Brett. now i'm letting you speak That's fine. <laughs> so uh, on a different subject, but it's the same day. Uh, we are commemorating the uh, use of nuclear weapons in Japan. You know, what a sad uh, anniversary that comes up. Uh, I think August the 6th was the first use of nuclear weapons in 1945. So we will be at Denman. Do you know where Denman Park is? It's up there off of Fredericksburg, a little bit past the Clinton Station there. And uh, so uh, Friday, August the 5th, uh, they've done this in the past, and we're going to do it again this year uh, to, uh, you know, commemorate that tragedy. There you go. Can I just say that this Take Back Our City is a really good name. I really like it because Yay. I think it includes a lot of people cross-section, and I think we should call ourselves that. Okay. Yeah, good. The United States.
it's okay. Big Pepper City has quick announcement. Uh, a number of people involved in the Viago Medida movement are uh, trying to draft an alternative water management plan for SOAS in place of the pro developer plan that they've got. Uh, we're going to be working on it hard over the next couple of weeks. If you're interested in volunteering to work with us on this, uh, please give me your contact information and I'll try to get back to you soon. And Anna has an Going along with Miyako Mivida as a young person, a lot of activism has to do with social media, even for like some older folks from Facebook and stuff. Talk about it a lot. Um, I love it. So what we're so what Sauce has done recently is that they put out this hashtag or this campaign called Waterful SA where they're saying like we have a lot of water, it's cool, but we still need more water to like bring in all these businesses who are going to in turn waste more water. And it's a lot of the people in the communities who already can serve and a lot of the the measures that they're going to do are going to affect community members. So what we're trying to do is basically steal their hashtag. Um, <laughs> And we're trying to do that with a voting campaign with community members. We have some papers over here that say my essay water future looks like, and we're inviting people to just write down how they see their water future in San Antonio, whether it's like we don't want all of this new water going towards like the west side or like no Vista Ridge, fracking is an issue, whatever people come up with, and then we're going to post those on social media and just kind of bring awareness to the water issues in San Antonio. So before you leave, you're, you're needing some folks to help. Yes. Um, I have some papers over here. There's some markers. We're just asking like people to have like right on there, um, kind of pulled up signs, and we'll just post them. Great. Can I make a suggestion? I mean, there's a lot of really good uh, groups that are present and they're doing stuff. And we need access to the, those names and contact information so that if we want to get involved with water or whatever other, that we can do so. We you don't have. We we will, and unless you don't want your info shared, let us know. We'll go back to that list and asterisk, and we won't share it. Otherwise, we'll share the list with everyone. Yes? Amy? Two things. One is the, uh, the projected growth of the of San Antonio by a billion and stuff. It's not supported by the state dem demographic uh, office of, of uh, population. And I will bring that information next month. And the th second thing is to thank everybody for their patience. And please stick with it. Please come next month. Um, I think that we will find as we work together as a wonderfully large group, um, we will be able to be effective in important ways. Thank you. Yeah.